new setting background today. I have to change it up every now and then, otherwise you're gonna get bored. And we don't want you getting bored. We want you entertained enough that you can watch these videos and not entertaining enough that you can't make yourself stop watching them because you need to go right. Hi, hello, how is your NaNoWriMo going? Mine is going pretty good, actually. So we went to the doctor, got some medicine, and now I'm feeling a lot better. Not great, but a ton better. By the way, I'm wearing this thing because it is really cold up here in my room. I'm not complaining, though. I live in Alabama where cold weather only happens for, like, two weeks. So I'm just gonna put on a blanket and not speak about it more than I already have. I've written a good amount today. Wait, where's my iPad? I have broken 9,000 words. I think I might possibly be able to catch up. I definitely think that I'm going to be able to reach my personal goal of 20,000 words. I mean, I'm already halfway there and we're not even halfway through the month yet. So, so long as I keep writing every day and don't just give up, I think I'm going to be able to reach 20,000 at the very least, which would be an accomplishment because 20,000 and it would be 2,000 more words than I wrote last November. So that would be a good word count. I still want to try to get to 50,000 words. I don't think I'm going to be able to get to today's word count because we're supposed to be at 50,000 words by the end of today. It's day nine and I haven't even broken 10,000 yet, but I'm going to do that by the end of today. That is my goal. Once as soon as I finish filming this, I'm going downstairs listening to some music and no more catty-tastic binge watching until I am reached 10,000. I'm one of those people that go back and watch catty-tastic's NaNoWriMo vlogs from like 2011. In fact, I just finished the 2011 ones right before I came back up here. They're really encouraging to me. They really make me feel more in a writing mood. They're also really distracting because I want to keep watching them. Here's what my first draft, the parts that I haven't rewritten yet, look like. It's still pretty big. I am one page away from this mysterious part right here, which is upside down. I actually don't know what I want to talk about today. I feel like talking about cliches. This is not of going to be a very good talk because I'm literally just swinging it. I feel like talking about cliches because I just finished a graphic novel that and it was really good but it was cliche happy. There were so many cliches like family moves from house in the city to a house in the middle of nowhere. It's big and spooky and needs a lot of work and has magical stuff surrounding it. And then it has the whole chosen one and the whole magical item that's like the focus of the series and everyone's trying to get at it. It's basically every single middle grade to fantasy-ish novel. You probably got a book in mind when I started listing these cliches. If you've read a decent amount of middle grade, I pretty much described all of them. To be honest, I kind of like some of the cliches in there. Like, they discover the secret world of fantasy creatures in the basement. That's a cliche that I like. I think magical items are pretty cool. I don't really care for the whole chosen one thing. I'm still gonna continue that little series it's in just because I kind of like these sorts of series with these sets of cliches. Like, it's not just a bunch of cliches. It's like a set of cliches. Has anyone else noticed that cliches usually sometimes a lot of the time come in a set for that genre like middle grade fantasy usually has like chosen one gateway to fantasy world usually starts out with the main character being unhappy that their family is moving from like a city area to a middle of nowhere area to a big spooky looking house and that house ends up being surrounded by magic like that's not just a cliche 
cliche that's like a set of cliches. That's something that I've noticed. Like all these cliches, typically they come in sets. I think that it can be pretty interesting when a cliche from one set appears in a book that would usually have different cliches in it. I'm trying to think of another set of cliches. I don't know horror movie cliches, but what if like in a horror movie you had a chosen one? Has that ever happened before? I don't watch horror movies, so I wouldn't know this is a bad example for me to be giving. But you get the point. It can be pretty jarring or interesting or surprising if one cliche from this set of cliches appeared in this set of cliches, in theory. I've never actually experimented with this or experienced it personally, but it is a theory that I came up with just now as I'm talking about cliches. So there are two theories for you. Cliches appear in sets. If one cliche from a set comes into another set, then it becomes more interesting. This is a very rambly talk because I honestly am coming up with this as I'm saying it. I actually think that my theory that cliches come in sets is actually pretty smart if I say so myself, which I do. But I think that's true. I think that contemporaries have sets of cliches. I can't list them. I can't think of them off the top of my head. If I had done more research for this video, I probably could and I would be more prepared and I would have more cliche sets. To speak more on cliches without talking about this theory anymore, get it away. We've talked about it enough. In my story, I feel like it's really hard to write a story and completely entirely avoid story cliches. On the other hand, I feel like it's pretty lazy to have cliches be in your book because you're kind of, it's sort of almost like you're writing your favorite stories rather than a new story. I don't believe I've actually told you guys what happens in all these pages. Have I ever given you a synopsis of what my story is about or any information about it at all? Because that's kind of like, this is like the centerpiece to this little vlog series. It's kind of weird that I've never told you guys about it. So I'm gonna do that now. The story that I am working on, you already know that I'm working on the second draft rather than the first draft for NaNoWriMo. It is a middle grade fantasy series. Currently, I am calling it The Legend of the City. That's not my actual working title. It's what I'm calling it on the social medias and the vlogs because I don't want you guys to know the working title just in case the working title ends up being the actual title. And then I can do a fun title reveal. It is about a boy named Chandler. He has heard this story about a city back in the Middle Ages that got destroyed by some fabulous disaster. He really doesn't like this story or folk tale or fairy tale or whatever because it does not have a happy ending. It ends with the city getting completely destroyed. It's not really a city. It's actually a town. It's not big enough to be a city. It's actually really small. He doesn't like it and then he ends up finding the ruins to this town and magically travels back in time to about a week before the disaster happens. Throughout the book, there's like so many hidden dark little secrets being revealed about the town and the places around it. So uh, that is what my story is about. At the current point of the story right now, Chandler has made a friend named Misty and he and Misty are about to get into a point of the story where they uncover a big secret about the town. Very plot twisty scene. It changes their motives. It changes the plot, it changes everything. That's everything I gotta talk to you guys about today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed that really rambly discussion about cliches. I hope your NaNoWriMo is going well. I hope your word count is high. Leave a like and a comment down below with your favorite and least favorite cliche as well as your word count for the day. Go write some words. Bye. Rawr!